Two lectures ago, we explored the cost graph in our graphical supplement. We graphed average cost as a U-shape, and we also graphed marginal cost as increasing as you produce more units, with the marginal cost curve crossing average cost at the bottom of the U. In a perfectly competitive market, marginal revenue is a horizontal line at the market price. We showed that a firm produces at the point where marginal cost crosses marginal revenue. If the price is above average cost, the firm makes a profit, represented by this rectangle. If the price is below average cost, the firm is losing money and will shut down in the long run. It's often helpful to couple this cost graph with a graph of supply and demand in the market. These side-by-side -side graphs are often tested on the AP exam, and they're a useful way to show how a market changes in the long run. So let's start. Let's put this cost graph on the right side. On the left side, we'll draw a new graph that shows the market supply and market demand. As always, price is on the vertical axis and quantity is on the horizontal axis. Let's assume the market price is $9. We draw demand like this with a downward slope and supply like this with an upward slope. They cross at the point where the equilibrium price is $9. This means that every unit of a good the firm sells will earn the firm $9. So marginal revenue is constant at $9. We can draw that on the right side. Here's why the side-by-side -side graphs can be so useful. We could draw a dashed line from the equilibrium price on the left all the way to the graph on the right. They line up perfectly to show you how the market demand interacts with the individual firm's decision making. Okay, so what happens now? As we see on the right, price is above average cost. The firm's profit is this shaded rectangle. It sells six units of the good at a price of $9, and an average cost of only $4. So it makes $5 of profit for each of the six units it sells. That's great for the firm. It's making a nice profit. The only problem? In economics, we think firms are like seagulls. If one seagull finds a nice piece of bread on the beach, the other seagulls are definitely going to notice. Soon a whole flock flies in. They start fighting, and the profits eventually fall to zero. We can see that in these graphs. Since the firm makes a profit, shown in the graph on the right, other firms will swoop in. The supply curve on the left will shift to the right. Quantity sold increases, but the price drops. Now notice what happens. As price drops, we draw a new dashed horizontal line to the graph on the right. Price gets lower. The shaded rectangle of profit gets smaller. Eventually, enough firms swoop in that price goes all the way down to average cost. At that point, profits are zero. No more bread on the beach, and the party's over for the seagulls. We can also show the opposite situation. Imagine that price is below average costs. Now the firm is losing money. In the long run, since firms are losing out, some will exit the market. On the left side graph, supply will shift to the left. Price rises and eventually profits go to zero. It's exactly how we described in our model, and we can see it clearly on the graphs. We can also show other interesting things with these graphs. Imagine this is the market for those old mainframe computers we talked about. What happens if we start at a place of zero profit, but then the personal computer gets invented and everyone stops buying mainframes? This is represented as a drop in demand. The demand curve shifts to the left. Price drops. Firms that were once making zero profit are now losing money. Eventually, firms start to drop out. So supply shifts to the left. Price goes back up although fewer mainframes get sold. Profits go back to zero. So as you can see, these side-by-side -side graphs are great to show how large market trends cause shifts over time that get reflected in the individual firm's decision making.